Here's a little quiz. Can you identify these three gentlemen? If your idea of a fun party is identifying recent lesser-known government officials, then this is a fun party, right? You got it? Know who these guys are? Yes, they are all former U.S. Treasury secretaries. Uh, one Treasury secretary from the George W. Bush years, and the other two are from the Obama years. If you got that, congratulations. You're going to kill it at your next pub quiz trivia night, right? Uh, of course, one of the things that Treasury secretaries do is they have to travel around the world to discuss financial stuff. Occasionally, for example, they have to travel to the Middle East, to the Persian Gulf countries, to talk oil prices or to encourage investment in the United States or whatever. Um, these are all photos of those three Treasury secretaries visiting the Persian Gulf states. But there aren't all that many photos of them because there weren't all that many of those trips. Those three guys over the space of a decade, over two different administrations, all three of them together visited the Persian Gulf states eight times, eight times in total between all of them. Now, how about this guy? You recognize him? A little more recent guy who held the same job, Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. During Trump's one term, during the four years he was Treasury Secretary, you know how many times he went to the Gulf states? At least 18. The last three guys went eight times in total between them. Mnuchin went 18 times just himself. That's a 12-hour transatlantic flight to visit his friends in the Gulf, probably more often than you visited your friends who live across town. I mean, his three predecessors, eight times combined over a decade. Mnuchin, 18 times in four years. Why is that? Well, new reporting from The New York Times suggests one answer to that question. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin was visiting Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates and Qatar and Kuwait to scare up new investments for himself, not for the United States, which is a thing that's called self-dealing, and it's a thing that we're not supposed to do. Last month, The New York Times reported on truly remarkable sums of cash that the various Gulf monarchies had invested in private projects being run by Steven Mnuchin, as well as projects for Trump's son-in-law, White House advisor Jared Kushner. And the monarchies started paying out this fund, these funds almost as soon as those guys left the Trump administration. Last year, after Trump was out of office, the Saudis gave Steven Mnuchin a billion dollars for his new investment fund. They gave Jared Kushner two billion dollars. And they did this even though Saudi Arabia's own investment advisors explicitly recommended against it in writing because they determined that Kushner had no experience, he had no other investors, their due diligence on Kushner's operations showed that they are, quote, unsatisfactory in all aspects. But still, the Saudis gave $2 billion to Jared. Why is that? Well, his father-in-law's administration had bent over backwards for four years to try to protect Saudi interests, starting with making Saudi Arabia Trump's very first foreign trip as president, something no president had ever done and no other president ever will. Trump and, and Kushner and Steven Mnuchin defended the Saudis' autocratic de facto ruler after he rounded up and imprisoned hundreds of royal family members, after he started a blockade of the U.S. ally in Qatar, after he signed off on an operation to kidnap, kidnap and ultimately murder and dismember a Washington Post journalist. All that favor and protection over the course of four years has got to be worth something, right? A couple billion dollars at least, especially if Donald Trump might be president again one day. So there's this sort of implicit quid pro quo in that situation. Hey, remember how good you were when you were in office? Well, how about—remember uh, uh, how good our administration was to you when I was in office? Well, now how about you put some money in my pocket? How about you invest in my new project? That quid pro quo with, with Kushner in particular is icky enough. But this new reporting from The Times suggests that Kushner and Mnuchin may have actively been using their government positions to tee up these money-making enterprises for themselves once they left office. Right before the 2020 election, Kushner and Mnuchin unveiled a new U.S. government-backed investment fund that would ostensibly raise billions of dollars for projects in the Middle East. All through the end of the Trump presidency, Kushner and Mnuchin kept flying all over the Middle East on the taxpayer's dime, trying to raise money for this supposed government fund. Jared made three trips to the Middle East just in the weeks between the election and the inauguration of Joe Biden. And when the January 6th attack happened, he was on his way back from Saudi Arabia, and Stephen Mnuchin was on his way to Saudi Arabia. Mnuchin ultimately cut his trip short because of the Capitol attack, but he did stretch it out still just a couple more days to try to squeeze in one more meeting with the leader of Saudi Arabia. Here's the thing, though. 
All those meetings were supposedly about this U.S. government-backed investment fund. The Times describes it as, quote, little more than talk. With no accounts, no employees, no income, and no projects, the fund vanished when Mr. Trump left office. Except Kushner and Mnuchin did later raise billions from all those countries they were scrambling to visit in their last months in government. They just didn't raise it for any U.S. government fund, which appears to have never really existed. They raised it for themselves. Just three weeks after leaving office, Mnuchin was talking about a plan he had. A few weeks later, he had detailed investment plans on a half billion dollars from the Emiratis, the Kuwaitis, and the, Qat and the Qataris. A half billion dollars from each of them. All these folks he had just been fundraising from as Treasury Secretary. Then came the billions from Saudi Arabia. Mnuchin and Kushner both took the government officials who had ostensibly been working with them on this government project and installed them at their new private ventures, where they would get the money. In April of last year, when Mnuchin sent the Saudis a roster of the top executives at his new private venture for them to invest in, one of the managing directors was still, at that moment, employed by the U.S. Treasury Department. I mean, this isn't even like speeding up the revolving door between government and the private sector. This is like, there's no door. It means you go to work for the U.S. government, and in the name of the U.S. government, you raise money for yourself. On the one hand, it feels like, uh, you know, another bit of corrupt detritus from the Trump administration that is stuck to our collective national shoe. On the other, on the other hand, this feels like something so blatant it cannot possibly stand. Can it?